is closer to Yasha, I believe. Yeah, she does have her Manta. She does her, her Manta style finish. Uh, Lina is going to be working on her BKB herself. I really absolutely love this choice. This is not going to be Aga Scepter. This is not going to be an SM White, of course. This is going to be a BKB. Uh, I mean, BKB it just shuts down the all the magical damage. You almost force, uh, you almost, you know, tempt the enemy t the enemy uh, Beastmaster into roaring you. And, uh, you know, if you could pull a roar off your off your carry player and onto yourself, that is a very huge accomplishment. So I really love uh, the item choices on LGD in this game. It's very smart item choices. And, well, of course, we do see Necrolake with Pipe and Mecha. So, yeah, back to the very smart item choices. ZSMJ very, uh, really impressed me this game. Lately, I haven't seen ZSMJ playing extremely too well, but um, in this game alone, he he has shown that he's just not a farming robot. Like he actually thinks, you know, what item should I farm for? And the the BKB first. Again, I, I generally don't like it in any other game, but in this very specific game where there was a lot of AOE damage, uh, especially the blocking the the Venomancer. Oh, it's just gonna be huge here. I'm not too sure what Ehome is waiting for. He's probably waiting for the third incantation of Roshan. Maybe hopefully they could uh, pick off. Oh, what is going on? Oh, no. Just uh, blocking the stun. Yeah, maybe. I, I think they're waiting to pick off um, Roshan. So, with the Roshan, that is actually like two extra free life uh, in from the Aegis and the Chi. So, both teams actually perched very aggressively here. At, but I think this kind of a, the, this, the kind of a war of sight, right? I think Scourge is definitely in a better hand. Uh, you know, they do have a better advantage because they do have Venomancer and they do definitely have that Hawk. That Hawk is a little bit too defensive. Should maybe park it over here, but I'm not too sure. Are they going to get swap here? Oh, wow. This Lina should be extremely careful. They are going to get a narrow arrow. is going to definitely get a hit of Venge. Venge. Oh, wow. A leaps in here, but it is going to manage him out. And that Venge get being picked off immediately here. A big team fight is going to be breaking out here. Uh, Storm Spirit drops out. Ultimate beam pop off on the Venomancer. Venomancer is going to do a lot of damage with a right click. No, he's being completely changed. The Beastmaster goes down. Storm Spirit goes down, but Venomancer is doing actually a lot of damage. He is going to be focused out on by those play cords. Is there any going to be buyback? There, a Beastmaster actually buys back, but... Uh, um, yeah, I think this uh, this fight is actually ending up in a stalemate because actually I think uh, Scourge lost a little bit more and uh, Lion actually very aggressive in terms of his chasing. I'm not too sure whether this was the best choice. Definitely not the best choice. I They might pick off the Lina. Lina does go down uh, and uh, oh wow, really Puck is, might be cutting it close. Um, so they did get, get off an extra hero, and I think this is the push they're looking for, or this is the attempt they're looking for. They are going to pick off the Roshan now. They definitely have the DPS to do so, especially with the Beastmaster, providing that uh, Vladimir's offering aura and his uh, attack speed aura, inner beast. So, I mean, let's see let's see how the uh, Aegis and the Chi sh should be distributed. I think at least, at the very least, uh, the Venomancer should pick up either one or the other, um, and maybe Beastmaster picking up the other, or maybe the Lion picking up the cheese or something uh, let's see how they get distributed i think uh, yeah puck gets the ch puck gets the agus and venomaster gets the cheese not too bad um i'm just a little bit worried about venomaster getting cheese in terms of not being able to survive a little bit too long to use it since he is the carry um they you know he does give the other team a lot of incentive to just mass focus on him uh, and change some in depth but I'm not too sure, but worst it comes to worst, they could really depend on a swap to save out the carry and get an absolute free heal of that as well. So um, I think Ehome is just looking to finish this game at this point. I mean, this is probably their last chance to do so. Um, they has they have lost uh, the two last team fight in terms of uh, in terms of the pushes, but they did win. Uh, not I won't call this team fight one, but uh, that that team fight showed them that they could. They could play in an even footing, footing if everything goes right. And in that last team fight, I mean, definitely it was in favor of uh, LGD when it came to initiation because um, the air was hit on the Venge, and that Venge died without being able to cast a single spell. There was a Laguna Blade on him to finish as well. So I think this is the big team fight. Let's see how they're going to pull it out. Um, I think they should. 
I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure what they could play, especially given the Beastmaster, who he should roar. But let's see how he's going to work out. Venge actually gets an arrow again here. Potom actually leaps in. They're going to focus down on the Venge once again. Venge being again dies the exact same way. And they're going to try to focus on the Stormster. Stormster does have BKB Zips back out. And they're going to focus on the Potom next. Potom actually taking some damage. She should be okay. Moonlight Shadow is being casted. Storm of the Spirit does go down. So no one actually dying for the Sentinel team. But at the very least, they big pick off a Ventral Spirit. Let's see if they could pick off this ancient war this ancient war actually living way too long than is necessary and uh, Glyph is popped, and they are going to force this Beastmaster. Beastmaster is forced back, and uh, Venomaster is uh, going to get stunned as well. Keep in mind that Venomaster does not have Aegis anymore, used it in the last team fight. Venomaster turns around for a uh, for a poison attack, but no, Stormster is going to go in, and they're going to, no, he gets Kex immediately, uh, gets Finger, but are they going to pick off the Storm? Stormster? No, it's going to be okay. Meanwhile, the Venomaster is going to drop down. Pucked in definitely huge trouble here. Let's see if in the get to blink out no he is gonna just circle around here line drops down here and uh, puck puck definitely in huge trouble puck is should be able to blink away i hope no very nice done from uh from shuriken oh no I, yeah he does have Vegas. is he gonna blink out no again very nice chain sun from uh from lgd so uh, they have successfully uh Pick off the entire team, but they lost a range racks out of it. These, uh, this actually meat wagging actually doing a lot of damage, but I think it's definitely worth it. Losing as a range racks, which is definitely not the important racks, losing the range racks for an entire team wipe is definitely, definitely worth it. And I think uh, LGD at this point could push for the win, or they could be very patient about this and take, to take this game very slowly because they do have the better carry. Potom is, uh, you know, Potom gear is very, very good right now. She is sitting at 2,900 go. Um, let's see if she's going to save her buyback or just finish her uh, Monair. Uh, yeah, I mean, either case is fine. I don't think... I mean, the safe, the safer choice is definitely saving for the buyback. But I think even if he went for the Maelstrom, I, I think uh, they should be okay because they are winning the game so, so much at this point. Which is very odd thing to say, right? Like you you have a you have your mid racks taken down. But if you look at the hero count, it's 30, 13 to seventeen. Like this tower doesn't mean too much of anything at this point. Um, and and really like it seems really odd. E home played it extremely well. I'm not too sure why they why they uh, waited longer than they should. Uh, but I think I think their time has came and passed. And this Lena ha yes has finished the BKB, so she is going to be popping her BKB in the next fight. Of course, Witch Shock extremely actually extremely tanking, uh, tanky with that hood, and that hood is going to go a long way keeping him alive in combination with that Ghost Scepter. Um, especially against you know Venom Master O and, and all that stuff. So I think uh, LGD is in a very good shape, but. I think they're gonna wait for Ehome to make a big blunder, which is might be a long time because I don't think Ehome will be make be making some big blunder. Um, I think definitely this game has showcased that that Chinese team is just just not used to playing against the bottom because that bottom actually, you know, two or three times just threw a random arrow in the middle of like three heroes, like a long distance arrow, and and they hit like all these guys just stood there and and just like stood there. They they didn't even run around and whatnot. So. Looks like there is going to be a final team fight coming in. Potom uses ultimate, so there is going to be a, probably a free initiation, and they are going to focus on the Venom Master. That's going to be huge. Venom Master is going to be picked down. They are going to pick him off immediately. The, does he have buyback? No, he does not have buyback. So this is going to be a BKB being pop. Lion pops his BKB as well, using his self though. And uh, yeah, this is definitely the yeah this is definitely the the game. So uh, LGD catching off uh, Ehome not not used to playing a bottom a perfect moonlight shadow initiation that storm just zipped in from eight mile away and i think this is going to be game here yeah bottom with this rest of the team is just basically going to walk in and just take all these racks it's, again very cl anti-climatic ending but um it, it it's definitely a byproduct of very good strategic play uh from lgd i mean i mean both teams played it pretty well in terms of skill wise but uh strategic wise i think I think LGD made all the correct decisions, and uh, maybe uh, maybe Ehom not not playing as best as they can, and they are gonna focus down. Oh, really good swap to focus on the puck here. Venge dies instead, but uh, I think Puck might be in trouble as well. Puck blinks out, but I don't think at this point LGD even care. They're gonna put pick off this Tampa of the dam, and it's gonna get the top racks relatively unchallenged. 
So uh, Ehom playing it extremely well early stage of the game, but just faltering at the end because they didn't push quick enough and allow like the bottom to to get too big, allow the storm surge to get too big. And uh, BKB first on bottom actually working out, and I gotta say very very creative item build. We generally don't ever see that on a bottom, so I'm glad it, 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 doing something actually will work. So. That is two set of racks, and they are going to focus down on the line. Line gets picked off immediately before he could do anything. Potom leaps out with his BKB. Uh, actually, uh, line, uh, line. Uh, I mean, not line. The witch doctor is going to be okay. There's a maledict. Maledict is going to do a lot of damage. And Venom actually, actually having a lot of attack speed and damage at this point, but. Oh, dies to the uh, Maledict Tick, and I think that is going to be okay. Any moment for the team to call GG. King J calls GG, and uh, the other team responds. So that is the game here. And uh, I'm gonna look at look at the end game screen and talk about how this game has progressed. So, I mean, 34, 34 to 18 might be a little bit of a poor indication of how the game went. Uh, Ehome was definitely in the driving seat of the entire game, at least for the first 30 to 40 minutes or so. But at the very least, um, that it was a very bad choice. Uh, there was one time where uh, LGD was pushing up top lane, and and I think there was a whole bunch of heroes on the bot lane, bot jungle for Ehome, and they could have just easily swung to the at least, you know, put some pressure on the bottom tower. I'm not too sure whether or why they didn't do that. They definitely saw two of their heroes just ganking their puck on top lane, so they should really they had no fear of being team jumped or anything like that and they definitely knew they were being pushed on the top lane so the fact they didn't push bot lane and and just gave up a free tower at top was I guess the beginning of the doom the beginning of the end that Ehome faced it and uh, definitely uh, Ehome went for a very pushing oriented item we saw the Beastmaster going for Vlad's instead of the blink dagger we saw yeah very pushing oriented item but they just didn't push uh, at least they didn't like go for any like a base race because they definitely have the advantage in a base race they definitely have more plus damage and whatnot so I'm not too sure why, why they didn't do so um, and they, they try to they keep they try to keep engaging in a 5v5 battle and having a puck and a venom master does help out but not when the other teams is stacking BKB such as the storm spread such as the bottom and and the uh, and the, what you call it, and the lean at the end as well. So, um, going to that, very good item choices from LGD, and uh, you guys have heard me uh, spoke uh, talk about this like a broken record. But I think uh, really smart item choices, going off the norm, is gonna win you game. LGD has shown that they have adapted really well. Maybe even adapting towards the the playstyle of of e -home going for you know tanking item first, because I know they know that if you don't outlast e -home, you're gonna lose a team fight, especially with a Venomancer. So the only way to beat, you know, beat e e home in their own game is actually to outlast them yourself. So getting, you know, tanking item and giving survivability items such as the BKB uh, won them the game. So I think again, I don't think the game was won from playing style, or not playing style. I don't think the game was won uh, from from play, but the game was definitely won from the strategic aspect of the game. So. Again, definitely not the most interesting in the cast, but uh, I hope this game was uh, very ed educational in the terms of uh, the item choices and whatnot. So, I think that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this commentary, and this is Luminous signing off. I hope you guys enjoyed it. GG.